Okay, let's talk video games for a second. Um, just because, like, I think a lot of the, um, I don't know if you're millennials, Zoomers, whatever you, young upstarts, okay, you're playing all kinds of games on your Y box or your whatever, Sony. Here's some stuff to check out that's older. You probably get to for dirt cheap. Good stuff. Number one is Myth 2 Soul Blighter. Number two is Icewind Dale. And even its predecessor, which was a little more primitive, called Baldur's Gate. And there's Icewind Dale 2. Um, and I forget if there's uh, Pillars of Infinity or some other new stuff coming out with that same engine. But um, I'm not, I'm a new YouTuber, so I'm not going to show you a bunch of like gameplay stuff. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But the bottom line is, in general description in Myth 2, you, you have a little army squad, like your own little Marine Corps squad. There's a whole lot of enemies, and you're on a map. And you can see it from probably a bird's eye view looking down, right? There's different elevations on the map a little bit, some obstacles. And you're help hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned. And the only thing that's going to even the odds are the fact that you have a little like, Molotov cocktail throwing dwarves. It's in kind of a mythical, magical realm, kind of like whatever, Dungeons and Dragons y. So, <clears throat> gameplay is awesome because you have to maneuver all your characters back and forth and maybe retreat sometimes to try to soften up the enemy enough of those bombs. And then there's different back and forths where the enemy might have a guy that throws lightning bolts and you got to kill that guy off with your archers before he gets close, otherwise, he's just going to annihilate you. And then, um,. There's custom maps now that are made by fans, and I think at some point I'm going to have to figure out how to do that because if you started adding all kinds of other monsters to this game, it would be awesome because there's a pretty good variety. There's a, a, a bunch of new ones added by the custom map people on the Tame, I think is the name of the website. And um, then you can do multiplayer, which is something that I've only rarely done, but that was awesome too because it was me and like two other people against a team of three, and uh, each of us has like so many members in our little squad, but we're all on the same kind of team. And that was sick. That was really awesome. They still have some of those servers up. I haven't checked that out in a few years, though, so don't quote me on that, but I'm sure it is still, because I, they call those the multiplayer maps. So that's Myth 2. There's also Myth 1, which is a little more primitive, but still fun, too. Both could be made into a series of sick movies. Um, forget making a Warcraft movie. That was a joke. But anyway, we all know the movies have pretty much sucked since 1989. And, um, so then we get into uh, the Icewind Dale stuff. The Icewind Dale, well, that was kind of cool. My camera's kind of funking out. Um, Icewind Dale, you have a little, it's a Dungeons and Dragons, like third edition rules or something. You play fighters, clerics, thieves, warriors. And you start out with, um, I don't know if you can start out with a few and add others, but anyway, you get like a little squad of, say, six little characters, right, going on this map. There's all kinds of monsters and stuff. What happens is you tap the space bar, right? And you can click on your character. And you can go in there and either change the weapon or change the spell or whatever. You know, mess around with whatever you want that character to attack with or where you want them to go. And then you click on the map where you want that character to go. Or you click a target if you want it to shoot an arrow or whatever, run toward that target and clobber them with a mace or something, right? And then you unclick, and then the, the action goes, right? So it's like a little bit automated. But your characters will go over, and they'll start, like, hacking and slashing and fighting and all kinds of stuff. And the bad guys will start doing the same thing, shooting arrows at you and fighting and chopping. And um, then if you have a spell, it'll go boom and zap or do whatever it's going to do. And this sounds like kind of kid stuff, but it is awesome to watch in real time. If we're talking, like, you know, it could be a dozen different things all flying, you know. So you might have to – and if one of your people starts getting – ganked, right? you got to, like, hit the space bar again, retreat that character, or if you're going to drop a fireball in the middle of something, you, you, know, you want all your guys to get the hell out of there before they all get fried with the enemies. And there's a pretty good, awesome array of monsters. I mean, I think that this game, I wish it was, like, open-sourced, like Myth, where the, the map-making tools were... Because if people put up online, like, new levels for this stuff, it would be, like, one of the greatest things of all time. It would be sick. Like, you could just not even advance the game engine. Just take the same game engine and release, like, another 500 levels on this thing, right? If someone wanted to go nuts and hire a team to do it. And I think everybody would buy it. Or you could, you know, maybe 500 is too much. At least another 50 maps, right? And um, 
it would be awesome. Or even if you could have something that was like player versus player with this, you wouldn't even need graphics as advanced towards World of Warcraft. So billionaires out there, think about this. Do an online Baldur's Gate, right? <clears throat> have one, um, whatever, have some one side play bad guys, one side play good guys. You know, there's all kinds of possibilities. You guys, you know, let your mind spin with that stuff. You can, like, go nuts. Um, because you have kind of enough graphics where you can see what's going on and what's fighting, but it's not all about, like, this super, like, realistic graphics, like, oh, my God, I can see the scales on a lizard man or something like that. It's more about the tactics. And there's, like, little, like, power gaming things you can do to kind of, to kind of cheat. Like, if you have a strong character and you throw darts, right, the dart doesn't do much damage. It's, like, I don't know, one point or something. Because your strength is, like, max, maxed out, it adds four to the damage, right? So now your dart goes from one to, like, say, five points. And if you can throw, if you have some skills like fast throw or, I don't know, super fast attack or something like that with missile weapons, right, and then a high level of skill missile weapons, all of a sudden this thing turns into, like, a machine gun. You're, like, shooting six of them for each turn, right, for each round. So you start, bah, bah, bah. And then what you do is you get all your characters that have darts, right? Because the name of the game, and this is a little cheap, but... It's not really a cheat, but it's kind of like a tactic that works really well that people play the game know about. If you have all of your all six of your characters focus on one enemy, you can like blow them up and kill them pretty fast, right? So what you do is you start with say the strongest enemy that's going to hurt you the most, and you blow that person up first, that guy or gal, whatever, or monster or demon or whatever the heck it is, blow that one up first, and then move to the next because that is much better than kind of everybody just randomly hacking and slashing at everybody else and slowly whittling them all down because then all those baddies are getting attacks and ganking you back, right? Whereas if you actually absolutely blow up one of the baddies and there's four of them, now there's only three to gank you back. And that's kind of a power gaming thing, but whatever. And um, it's a trip. I mean, it is a trip. Um, spell system... You know, somebody, if I could take over this game or make my own version of it, I might do all kinds of different things with the spell system. Like, you could go nuts with that because it's D&D is pretty static with that stuff, and it's almost like there's a flavor to it. And um, original D&D had a ton more variety. Like, you could summon, I mean, you could summon stuff. Like, you can conjure up undead, and you can conjure up animal helpers and stuff like this. But the... Um, the variety there could, you know, you could go nuts with that if you wanted to. And then if you wanted to do stuff like instead of when you get, get more powerful or gain another level, instead of getting new spells, you did something like you could make an existing spell that your guy or gal already knows, make it powerful, and then maybe you could only make it powerful in like one dimension, right? You can make, make it stronger, or you can make it last longer, or have a bigger range, or, you know, whatever. If you're summoning one thing, you two, that kind of fun stuff. So there's all kinds of stuff. The mind, you know, the, the sky's the limit with that. And, um, you know, you can do other st other variations of this. You can do something that's like a kind of a cyberpunk version with the same little graphics thing, right? Just kind of like a little person walking around a map. And, yeah, there's doors and stuff. So you hit the door, and then it's like another map of what's inside that little store or something you went into, right? And then you hit the door and you go back out. And it's, it's kind of cool, but it's, like, good enough, right, that the kind of world is taken care of. And now it's just a matter of you designing all the stuff, right? And then you designing the dangers and the powers and the attacks for the baddies and the goodies and whatever, right? I mean, there's some cool stuff in there. You can, like, unfreeze some people that have been turned to stone, right, by a basilisk. And you can ask that person to join your gang, right? If you haven't, like... In the beginning, you can actually power game and set up all your characters just the way you want because you have up to six slots. But if you start with one person... You can just add these random characters throughout, but they're not as powerful and as kind of like nasty as if you power game a bit and kind of like, you know, <clears throat> create your own, but whatever. Um, see, I'd change that too. Like, if I could it, I'd have some characters that would be like really badass. And you could add that are, um, might have powers or abilities that are not available to you when you create the character classes. There's something different, like something no one's heard of before. And, um, so it would be worth it for you to start with just one person and add these, like, specialists or crazy people along the way. Um, so all kinds of give and takes with that. The imagination, like anything, can run wild. Um, really cool stuff. Um, so that's, we've covered well, Myth 2. We've covered the Icewind Dale. 
it's kind of like the ball. It started as Baldur Skating, Baldur Skating Two, and then Icewind Dale, Icewind Dale Two, and blah, 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 blah. Um, Now there's like Pillars of Infinity, which I actually might ask for Christmas for that because that thought was pretty awesome. It's like a newer version with new maps and new stuff going on. Um, in terms of complexity, the Kingdom Come Deliverance. See, that's the kind of thing like where you actually move the mouse to kind of slash like this. I remember trying um, was the Elder Scrolls or something, and it was just too much. It was like I'm not. Maybe I'm old or something, but I don't like too much complexity in these games. The complexity I like is from the multiplicity of different spells or items you can use. And, you know, there's some stuff like that. Like, you know, if you hit a certain kind of enemy, like a blob or something or a slime or a kind of amoeba-looking thing, it's not going to, like, get damaged by swords because the sword just kind of goes through it. Whereas you have to switch to something blunt, right? And that's kind of an old D&D kind of thing. They had certain monsters that just... If you didn't have a blunt weapon, you were screwed. So like, so power gamers like me would always have their character max out on a blunt weapon. Uh, but I, I always forget if there was ever something that was the opposite that would like not care about a blunt weapon, but get ganked by like a spear. So I don't know, something to think about. And then, um, so yeah, I mean, this video game designs, that's, that's a great job. I mean, it must be tedious once you have to test it and stuff, but to figure out the system and all that must be pretty awesome. Um, because there could be a lot of multiplayer online games that you don't even need all this fancy graphics crap. And I know that that's pushed by the hardware vendors because they want people to have to have more and more, buy more and more graphics card, get a new PC every year, right? But something old like this, I mean, it's not going to make companies zillions of, I mean, it probably would, right? If, if, if billionaires out there, if you... If you took Icewind Dale 2 and made another 100 levels on that game, even though that's low tech compared to now, right, and low graphics requirements compared to now, a lot of people would spend 50 bucks and buy that. A shit ton of people would do that, especially if you put, like, a good variety into it and had a little bit of, you know, get some kind of person that's hardcore and let them run with it, right? Or maybe a, or maybe a couple of those people. Get some gals, get some guys, whatever, and let them kind of, like, expanded in every different direction, right? Like different levels, different monsters, different this, different that. But people would buy them. People would definitely buy maybe 50, 100 bucks for like another, even if, say you want to charge a lot, right? To get your investment back, you don't want to spend, you don't want to charge like 29 bucks and have only a couple thousand people buy it. Okay, then go nuts. Make like 500 levels, right? And charge like 99 bucks, right? And the people were like, holy shit, like I spent some money on that, but I got like, whatever, 300 hours of gameplay out of it. All right, so fuck it. I'm going to buy it. And um, millionaires and billionaires, think about this. It doesn't need to be high-tech, super-duper graphic-y stuff that's going to cost everybody a zillion bucks. Take existing games that did really, really well, get a team, and expand the levels. Like, make another 500, 1,000 levels. Keep, keep them working, right? Because then after the first 100 levels, right, say, okay, part two, now you get people already interested in your new storyline, right? And they played all through that. And they're like, oh, shit, when's the next one coming out? So next year, let's spend another 50 bucks on the next 100 levels. So you make 500 levels and they just each year and release 100. There you go. Boom. If your team gets bigger, hire more and just, you know, make them 1,000 levels. Because that's like you can just print money doing that because people will love those levels. I would pay 50 bucks for like another, whatever, 100 levels on, on Icewind Dale 2. <clears throat> Big time. No question. And um, you wouldn't have to come in with anything gimmicky to try to ruin it. Don't, you know, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just... Expand the variety of monsters, the variety of enemies, the variety of directions to go, variety of places to go. And um, total win, really huge win. Um, and uh, what other games can I kind of throw at you guys that were really good but older? Um, I thought StarCraft was good, but StarCraft 2 I haven't touched. And even the StarCraft expansion I thought kind of went in the wrong direction. They had all these monsters that was like too powerful. It would have been better to kind of like create another couple of races that had totally different angles. As it is, they just gave like overpowered new units to the existing ones, and that was kind of like, ugh. But that original game, StarCraft, was like really playable. Like especially... Um, the bad guy, the Zerg or whatever. It's amazing that like maybe Warcraft doesn't do that in the same way. Oop, I'm almost at 15. So all right, guys, talk to you later and gals.